What's up, everybody? Hey, this is another Sports Ruben Life. I'm coming in here. We up the production value just a little bit here. But anyways, uh, I want to get right into it. What I want to talk about initially is this whole idea of how the media interviews uh, the the athlete, right? When we're talking sports specifically, I'm going to get into this whole idea of uh, why sports athletes are asked the weirdest questions, right? So, and, and how inappropriate it is and how detrimental it is, right? So, um, before I get into that, let me just say this is a two-part series every single day, Monday through Sunday. Please check out the YouTube, my YouTube channel or my Facebook channel. There will be videos posted there every single day, one a day on each channel. This is going to be the first part today. This is going to go on YouTube. So, let's just jump right into it. Um, athletes getting interviewed by the media has gotten into this perverted kind of dimension where what's happening is these people are being asked these weird, weird questions. And, and the reason why this, this subject even came to mind is today I watched this interview by Saquon Bartley, the running back for the New York football giants, as Chris Berman would say. Uh, he was asked, like, do you feel yourself? Because the, the question was, he had like a low rushing yard game and they were saying that he's injured and he's banged up and there are, is he going to get shut down for the season? And and like it, it's kind of a preposterous, it's kind of a preposterous concept because of the fact that like you're asking a guy if you don't want to make a paycheck or if they're going to shut you down because of the fact that you had an off game. Like are we really trying to preserve these people in like you might as well put them in a can of tomato a, a com, a, in a can of pickle juice if you just want to preserve the player the the whole reason and and i and i'll always harp on this and and i'll keep on harping on this idea that what makes sports beautiful what makes sports compelling is the imperfection right the injuries the fatigue I don't want to, in basketball, the parallel is I don't want to play back-to-backs, right? So what happens is when these players, just like in a boxing, like Joe Rogan, right? He touched on this subject, and, and, and I'm going to connect all the dots in this, right? So Joe Rogan interviews fighters. He was interviewing, he, he does the post-fight interview in the octagon, right, for the UFC, right? And so what he was, he, he had mentioned in, some of his po- in, in a couple of his podcasts that he does not like the idea that you're interviewing somebody that has been knocked out because they'll say some things. They're not 100% coherent, right? They're not like co- coherent in the sense that like, um, you know, they can put together solid thoughts. You just been concussed. You just had your brain rattled. And consequently, if you really think about that, if you look at the parallels behind that, it's the same thing when you have a football player. He just got finished getting banged up and his brain is a little rattled. So when you have guys that are being asked these questions after the locker room, they should not be asked serious, non sequential logical or relative questions to what happened in the game you shouldn't be allowed to ask a question are you yourself what is that are you a psychology major do you have a master's degree in human psychology you don't you're a reporter looking for a salacious clickbait so you can try to kind of destroy somebody's career right a lot of these athletes had made silly statements and they have to go back and apologize because the media has got in the habit, instead of highlighting the sport, instead of promoting something, it's all self-promotion because it's clickbait atmosphere, right? Saquon Barkley, you ask him, are you who you are? Do you feel who you are? What kind of question is that? Are they going to shut you down because you're not feeling well because you had a bad rushing game? And what I, I, I like his response, but he's a young man. How versed, he's not going to be on like LeBron, like LeBron James knows how to deal with the media perfectly. He really does. Because he's had 15 to 20, like basically LeBron James has been in the media spotlight for 20 plus years now. So you look at the way he responds to, ask, to questions, silly questions that the media asks, they almost don't even ask him anymore. Because it, it 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 should be okay for an athlete to say, "Hey, man, don't ask me that silly question, dude. 
Don't, don't, I, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear you ask me a question that has very little relevance on the subject matter that we're talking about. I lost the game because I was injured. Are you not going to play anymore? What? Nobody in the history of the NFL has gotten an NFL contract for shutting down seven games in the season because you have a bruised hamstring or your knee hurts. The people that really do well, okay, they all play with injuries. They've all talked about it, right? Load management is a crazy concept. You should never load manage a game. You load manage your practices. You get more therapy. You get more rest. You get more uh, cerebral training. You, you, you look at more film. You do things other ways. But when it comes time to the game, if the person is available, you should put them in there. And they can contribute 1% better than the second string guy, whoever it is. All right. This is any sport. We're, we're, we're talking. This is this goes across every sport, soccer, basketball, baseball, badminton, uh, checkers, <laughs> che anything that is not an individual sport. You should not have this idea in your head as a coach that I'm going to load manage a player so that I can preserve them for some other mythical time. This goes back to this idea that if I pay $400 for a ticket and your coach says, mm, you know what, I don't want you to play right now because all these fans that literally pay their salaries are not going to be able to experience what they paid for. It's like a concert. Uh, Guns N' Roses is not going to play today. You paid your $1,000 a ticket. You paid front row seats. You you got into the VIP, but you know what? They're, they're okay to sing. They can sing, but they got two hangnails. One guy has two hangnails. The other guy has three hangnails. And guess what? They could they, they could perform. They should perform. They ha There's nothing that's restricting them from performing. But because they have hangnails, they can't perform, says nobody in the history of music. Right? It's the same idea with this. We have to stop coddling these players. And we also have to start employing these marketing people because the union and, and and truthfully it's the union's fault these players unions they see their athletes get bombarded and jacked up they get destroyed the reputations get tarnished they have to go backpedal and fix all this stuff isn't the isn't that what the union is in there for to help protect them shouldn't a union PR representative shouldn't they have coached them and teach them and say hey look at man during this time and 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 I'm going to give you an easy parallel when I was training truck drivers, I used to be a truck driver for 10 years. When I was training truck drivers, right, the question is, when do you crash? Do you ever want a student to crash? The answer is absolutely not, right? But you have to look at the probability of them wrecking, right, is the highest on the fifth day of the work week, on the sixth day of the work week, when they're fatigued at the end of their shift. So when should I be more vigilant? When I'm training them, right? I'm going to tell you what the answer is. The answer is simply, you have to always be vigilant, but you have to be additionally vigilant when it's the highest probability of them getting injured. Consequently, when you see a player every post game, the un a union rep, the shop steward, should be there. A lot of these questions need to start being vetted. We need to have vetted because they say, well, you can't be hanging. You can't be uh, lobbing them up questions because, you know, we want to get. <clears throat> no, that's not the way it works. You're being entertained, right? It's like Drake or Jennifer Lopez. They don't do an interview after a performance. It doesn't work that way. An award show, those are all different, right? But Jennifer Lopez and uh, uh, or Drake, they go out and do a two-hour uh, a concert, right? They perform at their highest level. They people have paid thousands and millions of dollars to go watch them perform. And what happens, right? They don't give them a post concert interview. They don't force that on them because of the fact that they're in a diminished state, just like any athlete, right? All these after practice interviews, it's very difficult to be on point 100%. When you're tired, when your kids are tired, 
They're not going to listen to you, right? At the end of the day, when your kids were up all day, they were at school, you took them to the park, you did this, you did this, you did that with them, and then you expect them to be perfectly behaved children at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday night? No, dude. They're going to be tired and cranky. They're not going to want to listen. That's just the way it works. That's Parenting 101. Your expectation level of them being perfect at 8 p.m. when they had a full week and a full day, it's time for them to rest. So don't ask them to go figure out 75 math problems at 8 p.m. on a Saturday night. It doesn't work that way. You got to get them when they're fresh. Consequently, it's the same thing for athletes. So anyways, if you like this video, check out the other video. Uh, I'm going to talk about refereeing and what we should do about the refs in the state of all sports. Okay. It's going to be an interesting topic. These are two sports. They're not. I'm not talking specifically about a sports activity, I, I mean, of, of a sporting event, I'm talking about uh, some kind of like the under underneath kind of stuff, the behind the scenes stuff, right? But anyways, uh, uh, media people, let's be more cognizant of the fact that an athlete is there to entertain you. He's not there to solve the world's problems. Some athletes are activists. And the, and the reason why this even came to my mind is because of the fact that they're interviewing Colin Kaepernick for potential jobs in the NFL, which is tremendous and amazing. And I'm going to do a video about that. But there's a connection to this whole thing. On my next video, I'm going to touch on it. Stay tuned for tomorrow. Like I said, daily videos. Two videos a day. Every two videos is one show, Monday through Sunday. First show's on YouTube. Second show's on Facebook. Sports. Ruben live. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this some more, maybe subscribe. It's okay. What I really like is the comments. Hit me with the comments. I try to respond to everybody. Obviously... It's not perfect, but I really enjoy the interaction with that part. So if you uh, have a take on it, if you have your opinion on it, I want to hear it. I want to see, uh, you know, it, it, all that's interesting to me. So anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Um, I'm really having fun doing these videos. I'm going to keep posting them. I appreciate it. Bye.